Hey guys, Phil Swart here from Create Effects. Now before we start today's tutorial, I just want to thank everyone who supports the channel. As you can see, we are very close now to 1,000 subscribers and close to 100,000 views. So I just want to thank everyone again for supporting the channel and please continue to do so. So without further ado, let's start today's tutorial. Recently I did a project where I had to extract one freezer and put it into a completely separate environment. So to do that I had to use 3D camera tracking to help with the new environment for it to move the same way as the camera moved in the original shot. So while I did that I sort of utilized the camera tracker to do other tasks as well. So today I want to show you how to use 3D camera tracking to speed up your rotoscoping work. Now when I did this project I only used one keyframe to do the rotoscoping of this freezer here. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. So the first thing I want to do is just grab a camera tracker node. So if you just push tab and type in camera tracker, I'm going to plug that in here and have a look at that. And what I want to do is just click on the settings tab and just change a few settings. So if you just click on preview features just to see the track points that Nuke's looking at. And I want to reduce the number of features down to 100. And because I will, I'd rather have less points that are got more prominent and better points, I'm going to knock the detection threshold right up. And I'm also going to change the minimum length to 65, as well as change the track threshold to 0 0.85. And that's going to help me find better points. So what I'm going to do now is just go back here and just track the shot. Okay, now that we've done that, what we want to do is just click on solve, just to solve the camera track. And you can see we now have a solve error of 1.44. So I'm just going to look at the auto track tab here, just to see how we can improve this track. So what I want to do is just have a look through. And the first thing that we probably want to do is look at the max error. So we can see that some of these here have a really high error of 2.67 whereas the better tracks are 0.72 and if I just look up here 0.63 some of these points here are 1.48 0.15 0.8 so we can see that a lot of the ones that aren't very good are sort of definitely over 2 even 1.5 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the max error here I'm going to pop that down or put that probably onto, let's call it 1.5 and the max track error, let's put that onto 2. And you can see how it's highlighted a lot of the points here. Shouldn't have highlighted that point. I know. Let's pop that one up here. Let's pop that up to 2 actually. And now let's delete the rejected. The thing we want to really maintain is we want to make sure that we've got points in all the different depth planes here. And another technique you can actually do is to create user points. So let's say I didn't have any points here. You can quickly come in and create a tracker node. You can plug that in and create the new track. So let's say I wanted to track this point here. I could now go ahead and track that. And then what I can do is I can actually add that point. Let's say I was happy with that. Just delete it off to this point. And now I can go ahead and add that. I'll track back as well. And if I wanted to, now what I can do is come in here to the tracker. And I'll also click on user tracks here. And I'll now add one user track. And then what I'll do is I'll click on this user track from the tracker. I'll hold shift and I'll shift drag down to there. Actually I need to highlight that first. Now I'll do that again. There we go. So now I've added that user track to the solve. So now I can actually go and solve the camera again. And now I get a track error of 0 0.5. So what I'm going to do now is create a scene. I'm just going to create a bit more room up here. 
So now we have the scene and we can actually have a look at it through the camera and you can see the point cloud data here. So in the scene you can actually zoom out and see these are the, the points, there's the camera. So what we want to do now is do some rotor on one frame. So I'm going to go to frame somewhere in the middle. I'm going to go 2120. And I've actually done some rotor here. So all I've done is created a few different shapes to roto out this freezer and keep some of the shadow on the floor. So now what I want to do is type tab and push in project 3D. So I want to plug that into my roto here. And I want to create a frame hold node and just go with the camera here. I'm just going to neaten this up a little bit. So now I want to frame hold that particular reference frame, which we did the rotor on, so that's 2120. And I'm going to freeze that and plug that into the camera here. And now I need to create a card in the right depth plane. So what I'm going to do is click on the camera tracker. And we know that the freezer is here. This is the right depth plane. And we're going to take one with a low track error. Right-click and create a card. And that creates a card there. And now I'm going to take that card and plug that into the project node. Now you can see it's projecting the roto onto that card right there. So what you can see here, or if I type in tab and actually push scan line render, I'll now plug that into the camera, or now this is the moving camera, and plug that in there. And what's actually happening is we've got the roto here, and if we push A to view the alpha channel, you can see the alpha channel of the roto. So it's obviously not moving because it's just on one frame. So now we're projecting it through the reference frame of that 3D track camera, projecting it onto that card, and then we're pushing it through the moving camera. So now if we look at it down here, you can see how it moves along with that camera. So if we now look back at the normal channel, and if you just push K, I'm just going to get a copy of the footage here. I'm just going to put it down here. Now if we copy the alpha channel from that roto and put it in, or the moving roto now, and put it into the footage, because the footage doesn't have an alpha, so if we copy that alpha from here into there, we get that. And all we have to now do is pre-multiply that, and we get the cutout sort of freezer. Now what we want to do is just check through that and just see how the roto looks. And this will depend on how good the 3D camera track was. Okay, so now if we play that through, we can see the rotor does a pretty good job with just one keyframe. So if we want it to be really critical, if we go right to the extreme beginning, we look at it, it's, it looks pretty good, and at the end it looks pretty good. But if you really wanted to tweak it, you could easily go in, look at the rotor here, and then go right to the beginning, and if you wanted to do any changes, you can go in and move your rotor shape like that. But as I said, in this case, it's worked out pretty good. So now you can go ahead and, you know, comp that onto anything you want, like a checkerboard or... So if I just put a merge... Just pop these down. or even a constant, whatever you want really. Let's put that at 0.5. So you can sort of merge that over whatever you want just to sort of have a look and test it out. So what I did in the project was I obviously used the 3D camera tracking information and I created, I can actually show you that. I've got the script here. So if I actually just take you through a quick run through of what I did, I've got the shot here. I had to do a few things, just remove that label because the company didn't have the right label on at the time, and then pop the other label in. And then as we come down here, I created, I did the rotor here, as we've just spoke about. And then what I did was I created a 3D environment from this image. So what I did was I, let me just come in here and show you, I projected that image onto a series of cards to create a 3D sort of room environment. 
So then when I comped it all together, I'll just have a look down here. I also put some reflection on the ground. And when I comp this all together, you can see how the freezer fits into the environment and the environment moves the same way as the freezer moves. So it all sort of works quite well together. So that was just a quick rundown of how you can use Roto just to enhance or, or speed up the process, you know, speed up your workflow so you can get on and do other things. So Roto shouldn't really be something that, you know, takes you forever. Obviously, there are some shots which take absolutely forever, but uh, this is where learning all the little tips and tricks can really speed up your um, workflow. So I just want to say thanks again to everyone for supporting. And another thing is if you could check out the my production company, there's just some cool stuff on here. So I hope you guys have learned some today and can take something away from this. Please be sure to continue supporting Credit Effects and let's get over that 1,000 subscribers and over the 100,000 views. Thanks guys and catch you again next time.